if it was going well before it's going to get better in the name of Jesus what was not working has begun to work in the mighty name of Jesus this month of September and for the rest of the year everything that you desire it will come to manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus whatever needs to be changed whatever needs to be rewritten whatever needs to be uprooted so that you can enter into your manifestation I decree let it happen now in the name of Jesus glory to God hallelujah are we excited to be in God's presence this morning hallelujah glory to God glory to God you agree with me that as Christians seasons of fasting and prayer are seasons where we are expected to seek God and not just only for answered prayers to our felt needs or our immediate needs but seasons like this are seasons where we build spiritual stamina seasons like these are seasons where we experience renewal of our spirit and of our soul seasons like these are seasons where there are divine encounters and we will also get refreshed so as we go into this season in the next 21 days I want you to strip yourself of all distractions of your daily life and allow God to cleanse you because one of the things that God wants to do in this season is to strengthen and transform us from within. So you are going to lay down what you are used to. And in this season, you are not only going to fast food. That is one. You are going to fast a lot of other things that you engage in on a daily basis. For somebody... This is the time to quit Netflix and chill so that you can study the word and grow. For somebody, you need to fast your phone because if care is not taken, you are getting addicted to this device. Every minute of your life, you are looking at it. At this time, we are expected to draw closer to him so that he can equip us with the spiritual power and the spiritual strategy that we require to face the challenges of this life and overcome them. These are seasons where it is imperative for us to dedicate ourselves to deep spiritual renewal so that there can be an encounter. Because without a spiritual renewal, there will not be any form of encounter. And there are certain things in our life that cannot answer to this version of us. The, see, everything you are praying for is also looking for you. It's just that it will not come to this version of you. So this is an opportunity to build up yourself so that you can get to that place where everything becomes new so that you can have new level of exploits in every area of your life. The reason is because littered around scriptures are stories of men who had encounters with God and by those singular encounters they did not only change the trajectory of their lives, they changed the trajectory of everyone around them. Example was Moses. He was a stammerer. But he became one of the most useful and blessed prophets of God. Saul, on his way to Damascus, had an encounter with the Lord. Not only did his name change, everything about his life changed. You might be somewhere in your life today where what you desire is change. What you need is this 21 days of spiritual renewal. 
Solomon had an encounter with God in the middle of the night. Not only did he become the wisest person, he became also the richest person. They brought to him a hard case. And by the inspiration of the Spirit, he brought out the word of God. Because of one singular encounter. Encounters are very important. Because they birth spiritual realities in our spirit. Many of us, the God we know is the God we are told about. Not a God that we have experienced. And the knowledge of God is not cerebral. If not, it is going to be, they, there will be no difference between the Bible or your biology class. The knowledge of God is experiential. And until you have an experience of what the word of God says, you don't know that scripture. You might be able to quote it. A scripture you know is a scripture that you have tasted. A scripture you know is a scripture that you have experienced. And this 21 days poses for us this level of transformation. People of God, publicity is easy in the presence of results. The only reason why people struggle to preach Christ is because they don't have the unique results that Christ produces. If you lack results in your life, you will talk, you will manipulate. In fact, you might become beggarly. Bishop Eriko usually says this. He says, only fools doubt proofs. There are certain level of relationship you cannot maintain until you have the fruits or results for those relationships and it's scriptural the bible spoke concerning the apostle paul he said when the apostles in jerusalem heard of the diverse manifestation of what he had done in the cities of arabia the bible says they gave him a right hand of fellowship they are not talking to you not because they don't like you they are not talking to you because you don't look like what they should talk to so stop getting angry. They, nobody hates you. It's just as you don't look like what they want. So if I were you, I would take this 21 days so important. Because not only would my life be transformed, I will receive spiritual strategies that will keep me in perpetual victory for the rest of my life. Luke chapter 5 from verse 5. I just want to buttress that point for us. Luke chapter 5 verse 5. The Passion's Translation, please. Luke chapter 5 verse 5. Let's start from verse 5. The Passion's Translation. It says, and this is the story of how Peter caught a multitude of fish. And I read. It says, Master, Peter replied, we've just come back from fishing all night and didn't catch anything. Maybe you have hustled, struggled, manipulated, tried from January up until this month and yet you have not seen the desired result that you want. The scripture speaks to you. It says, but if you insist, we'll go out again and let down our nets because of your word. So this 21 days, we are insisting that you will let down your net again. Verse 6. It says, when they pulled up their nets, based on the instruction of Jesus, the Bible says, they were shocked. If you will walk and align with God in these 21 days and receive a word, just like Peter received a word, even you, you will be shocked with the kind of results that you will command. The Bible says concerning Peter and Paul, Peter and John, he said in Acts chapter 3, he said they knew that they were unskilled men. But because of what they produced, the Bible says they knew that they had been with Christ. He says they were shocked to see a huge catch of fish. And let me tell you what this huge catch of fish, it was not just like they have a, 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 a kind of harvest, no. The Bible says if you read the Greek, Greek, Greek manuscript, the Bible says the kind of harvest they had was a harvest of two weeks. So what somebody will harvest on a good day 
Monday to Sunday, Monday to Sunday, is what they received by receiving the word of God. In this season, as the word of God comes to you, you will do beyond your expectation in the mighty name of Jesus. You will have shocking testimonies and shocking results in the mighty name of Jesus. It says so much that their nerds were ready to burst. Somebody will have an overflowing testimony in this season. In the name of Jesus. Verse 7. It says, this harvest was so much that they had to wave their business partners in the other boat for help. I say you will have testimonies that will announce themselves. You will not need to tell anyone. By the time you show up, by the time they see you and the results you will command, after these 21 days of waiting upon the Lord, they will know that indeed you have been with Christ in the name of Jesus. It says they waved to their business partners in the other boat for help. The Bible says they ended up completely filling what? The boat's boat with fish until their boat began to what? Sink. And this is my emphasis, verse 8. It says, when Simon Peter saw this word, astonishing miracle. And you must understand that this miracle did not happen because Simon was a good fisherman. And it did not happen because he went to Harvard. Neither did it happen because his mother was the governor. This miracle happened via the word. What am I trying to say this morning? If only you will align yourself enough with God to receive a word, everything that seems impossible in your life will now become possible. It says, the Bible says, he knelt at Jesus' feet and begged him. You know, there are testimonies that bring people to tears. Have you given, have you, somebody ever begged money from you before? Right? And then you gave them what they did not expect you would give them. And they knelt down and cry. Who understands what I'm talking about? There are people that, let's not, let's not say certain things. You know, there are gifts you give even your parents. They will need them. You don't understand? You have not learned how to take care of your parents. Jesus. It's a, it's a selfish children, yeah. My brother, take care of your children. Take care of your parents. Too. There is a covenant in taking care of your parents. The Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, and your days will what? Will be long. You don't need to pray for protection. If you walk that covenant, nothing can go wrong. It's a no answer. Anywhere I say I'm going, I will arrive. My best time in this life is when I'm traveling. I sleep like a baby. If, if, you just, if I enter the car and you just drive me out of this gate, I will sleep. I've programmed my head. Because there's no way I will tell you I'm going somewhere and I will not get there. Why? Because of the understanding of a covenant. But it's not you're running over now, you're, you're, you're carrying four bodyguards with two mobile. Honor thy father and your mother. Clap if you want to clap. If it's a, and it's a good time to clap. Glory to God. So, what is spiritual renewal? Oh my God. Every time I look at this time, I imagine it's not mine. Spiritual renewal is the transformation or activation of the Spirit of God in the life of a believer. that enables the believer to live for God and do more for God. I'll take it again. Spiritual renewal is the transformation or the activation of the Spirit of God in the life of a believer. And that transformation and activation is what enables that believer to live for God and to do more for God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Passion's translation. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. He said, As you yield freely, 
and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, what will be the result? He said, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. So many of us are trying to stop certain habits. Many of us are trying to put an end to certain occurrences. Many of us are trying to move away from the life of sin just by discipline and new year resolution. Brethren, it cannot help you. Haven't you noticed that every time you write down the list of things you don't want to do anymore, that same day, you will do 10x of that thing. Who understands what I'm talking about? You say you don't want to drink all of a sudden on Friday. You work late and then they just alpha. And because you were conscious of it when you first got to, the, to, to wherever it was, they said, what do you want? You said, tonic and, tonic and lemon. And as you are drinking tonic and lemon, and you know you can't drink two glasses of tonic and lemon. If not, pile will kill you. And as the gist done the entire body, what's that one? What's that one? And that's the end. You can read the story after service. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because the antidote to a life of sin and error is spirituality. Verse 17. It says, for your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you. It says, and the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self-life from dominating you. So these two are incompatible and they are conflicting forces within you. They are your self-life of the flesh and the new creation life you have in Christ Jesus. Verse 18. It says, but when you are brought into what? Full freedom of the spirit of grace. And you must understand that grace is a person. And his name is Jesus. And like he says in Titus chapter 2 verse 12. He says that same grace will give you the ability to live a self-disciplined life. Right? He says, then you will no longer be living under the domination, domination of the law. But what will happen? He says you what? Swear above it. So the only way to swear above the life of sin and error is to yield yourself to your spirit. And this 21 days gives you the opportunity to truly do that. This 21 days gives us the opportunity to stay intact with the things of God. What is spiritual renewal? Spiritual renewal is the process of being refreshed and strengthened by God's presence and power. You see, you cannot run the battle of life with yesterday's energy. You have to be refreshed on a daily basis. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, Passion's translation. Ephesians 3 verse 16. It says, and I pray that he would re unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until what supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and what explosive power so you cannot have a life of victory, a life of consistency in the things of the Spirit until you are strengthened by the Spirit of God. This is the reason why many of us love God so much, but yet we are not able to do the things of God consistently. It is that lack of strength and enablement. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. So it can multiply your strength. It can multiply your strength. And how do you get your strength multiplied? It is from a place of what? Spiritual renewal. You get refreshed. You get strengthened. As you wait upon the Lord in fasting. 
You fast the flesh so that you can fatten your spirit. As you wait upon the Lord in the place of prayer, there's a transformation. A, 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 a weak you begin to receive the strength of God. A shy you begins to receive the boldness of the spirit. There's, a, there's an exchange. What is spiritual renewal? Spiritual renewal is an opportunity to deepen one's faith and our relationship with God. You see, you cannot continue driving a car without servicing it. True or true? And you are not servicing a car, not because it cannot perform, but you are servicing it so that it can perform efficiently. Am I correct? The same thing with our human spirit. Until we, our, our time of spiritual renewal is a time where we service our spirit. Where we service our spirit and it then leads to the transformation of our mind and our soul. Life is a journey. And as we walk with God, we will always need seasons like this. Seasons of spiritual renewal. Seasons where we come back to him so that he can turn things around for us. So what happens when there's spiritual renewal? Number one. The renewing of your mind. And how does that happen? It happens by putting off the old man and putting on the new man. You must understand that when you get born again, it's only your spirit that gets born again. Your mind still requires transformation. But what I see many people think is that they think that once they get born again, everything about them will just change. No. And this is why this season is very important. No wonder there are more sin committed in the church than in the world. Because believers are not being renewed on a daily basis. There's more hatred, gossip and backbiting in the church than even in the world. Than even on the streets. Because there's no renewal. A time of renewal. It's the time where you set yourself apart unto God so that your mind can be transformed. You see, many of us carry the emblem of Christ, but we lack the life of Christ. And we have reduced our Christianity to just a tick box when we are asked which religion. And I like to always ask this question. If it were you that God will send for all of us to get saved, we will all be saved. I want you to just think about it. The way you are living your life today, if all our salvation depends on the way you conduct your life, are we going to be saved? For many of us, the answer is no. So this is a time where we need to look inward. See, that you are going to prosper, succeed, and have money is guaranteed. The question is, are you going to be a great ambassador when you get those things? Because God is more important in the man you are becoming than the things you are asking for. God is more interested in the man that you are becoming than what? The things you are asking for. Because everything you are praying about, they are offshoots of one thing. Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It says, and what? All these other things shall be added unto it. But the way we live our lives, are we seeking him? Do we know him? What happens when there's spiritual renewal? There is repentance from ungodly character. And evil ways of thinking.
So how do you apply all of this because of time? How do you apply all of this? Number one, for you to experience spiritual renewal, you must have a goal. What do you want to achieve? I want to improve my prayer life is not, an, is not a goal, brethren. Because when, we, when you have certain conversations with certain people, you ask them, what do you want? You say, I want to improve my prayer life. It's not a goal. It's a desire. And that's why you never improve it. So let me tell you how you are going to improve your prayer life. You are either on a zero and you want to move to 15 minutes of daily prayer. Or you are 15 minutes, you want to move to 30 minutes of daily prayer. Or you are 30 minutes, you want to move to 45 or one hour of daily prayer. That's what? That's a goal. Another person will say, I want to know the Bible. It's a wish. The way you will know the Bible is by daily study of it. So, what kind of goal do you need to set? I want to read X number of chapters. Three chapters every day. Two in the morning, one at night. And I beg you, based on experience and popular demand, don't leave your Bible study time till later at night. The reason is because for many of you, once you open chapter 1 verse 1, the spirit of sleep will become heavy upon the brethren. Some people get tired. And when they are already tired, that's when they want to study the Bible. And that, it tells you the reason why you are still on Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 since January. But your goal is to read the Bible. Learn, see, let me tell you something then. God is not bound in time and space. I agree that there are certain hours where people like to do certain things. But always do your devotionals when you are most active. So that you can learn from it. You know why I said God is not bound in time and space? When it's 8 a.m. in Nigeria, it's 8 p.m. in another nation. And he's God of all, not God of all in Nigeria. So timing does not do anything. Let me set you free today. Pray in the night, 12 to 1. Forget that. Forget. The only reason why God honors your night prayer is because at night, men are supposed to be sleeping. So uh, to the flesh, that timing is a sacrifice. It doesn't make your prayer more potent than any other person's. In fact, the people that devise night prayer, the reason they divide night prayer is because they are always very busy during the day. The only time they can be quiet or they can have personal time is at night. So if you now build a doctrine around 12 to 3, 12 to 1, my sister, 12 to 3 is 9 to 12 in another country. True or true? What if the witch that is worrying you has traveled? So that means your prayer did not work. <laughs> All of these things is a lack of understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus. You cannot be bound with time or space. God does not live in time. Glory to God. <laughs> Some people do not agree. <laughs> the Lord will grant you understanding. Number two, what how can you strengthen or make the most of this moment? Have an accountability partner. And I say this again based on experience and popular demand. In the first five days of 21 days of fasting, over the years that I've seen, people are always pumped up and energized. Only to come the next week and they get to work and somebody gossip about them or somebody put their name on something and they forget everything. So if you want to do this consistently, get into a group, a small group, have somebody that can call you, sister, have you prayed today? Brother, have you studied today? The reason is because we are all products of habits and environment. If you don't put yourself, it says that he that works with the company of the wise shall be what? Shall be wise. And you cannot walk with giants, eat what they eat, and remain a dwarf. So get an accountability partner that can help you 
stay consistent in doing this and finally you can seek spiritual support and join a small group to ensure that you are doing this with a group of people are there people that don't belong to a small group or a cell in this service can you just wave at me I don't belong to a small group. I don't belong. I'm saying this because I want you to make the best of this moment. I don't belong to a small group. I don't belong to a cell. All right, please. Can we have people go around with cards so that they can sign up in this season? Just wave at me. If you don't belong to a small group, you don't belong to a cell. In this season, there's somebody here. There's somebody there. Glory to God. I don't belong to a small group. I don't belong to a cell. We need to do this in this season so that we can be effective at what God wants us to do at this season. Were you blessed this morning? How many of us are going to take an intentional step towards these 21 days to ensure that we make the best of it? And as you do, the Lord will open the eyes of your understanding and grant you strategies that will take you to your next level in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen.